This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the second lecture on Chapter 2. Uh, chapter 2 was the uh, Centre of Financial Position and the Statement of Profit or Loss. Uh, and assuming you have watched the first of uh, the lectures on this chapter, uh, we went through uh, that little example with lots of transactions showing at each stage a statement of what the business owned and what the business owed. And I said that that was effectively the statement of financial position. And although it was, let me now show you um, what we might call the pretty layout, the standard layout. Um, for the time being, for a sole trader, for the moment, forget limited companies, You'll see later the layout is almost exactly the same for a limited company, but there are a couple of extra things. But this is a sole trader. And if you look at the uh, next page of the chapter, you've got an example of a layout, which I've written out here. Uh, I think I've written it out quite nicely, but I mean, you've got the printed one in front of you. But let me use it just to explain how we lay it out nicely. Um, First of all, look at the heading. It's the statement of financial position at a particular date. Now, I've said by law, you've got to do it once a year. Some companies might do it every month, but you've got to do it once a year. Uh, but the uh, business can choose its own year end. So it doesn't always have to be 31st December, the end of a, an ordinary calendar year. This business has decided to do it every 31st of March. That's the company, the business's year end. And be anything they want. A lot do choose 31st December for obvious reasons, but it could be end of January or it could be end of June, whatever they want. Uh, they've chosen 31st of March, or every 31st of March, they would produce this statement. And the layout is basically, as we had in my baby example in the last lecture, People did use to lay it out differently, do things sideways and so on. But the standard layout these days is to list all the assets, what the business owns, and then below to list what the business owes to the owner, the capital, uh, and to other people. Uh, but a bit more detail. First of all, the assets, which is listing everything we own, uh, they have to be split under two headings, what we call non-current assets and what we call current assets. Uh, now, non-current assets are assets we intend to keep. And although there's no precise rule here, it's generally assets we intend to keep for more than a year. So here you've just got examples, you know, different for different businesses. But the land and the buildings, if we own our uh, buildings, then I think you'd agree that we normally intend to keep them. And not forever. You know, maybe come a time when you sell and you buy new buildings. But certainly, you would normally intend to be keeping them uh, for more than a year. Uh, similarly, plant and equipment. Those are your machines. Plant and big machines, equipment, smaller ones, it doesn't matter. Fixtures and fittings, your furniture. Motor vehicles, cars, trucks, vans, whatever. They're all assets you would intend to keep. Uh, we call them non-current assets, so we list them all, and the total here is 200,000. The others are called current assets, and these are assets that keep changing. You're not normally going to keep them for more than a year, not the same amount. Uh, but the inventories, you know, you buy goods, you sell goods every day. That stands to keep changing. We're just showing what was left at the end of the year. Receivables. 
You sell goods, people owe you money, they pay you, they owe you less money. Again, it keeps changing. At the end of the year, this business is owed 12,000. Now, jumping one, cash. All right, we hope we will always have cash, obviously, but the amount keeps changing. Buy goods, you spend cash. Sell goods, you receive cash. Well, but they're all current assets. Uh, the one I jumped over, prepayments. Now, I don't go into great detail here uh, because it's a topic on its own and you'll see there's a later chapter on prepayments. But essentially what it is is this. I pay insurance on my car. But the way I pay it, and I think it's the same for most people, I may have to pay, let's say, $1,200, but I have to pay for a whole year at the beginning of the year. So I don't know, maybe on the 1st of January, I have to pay insurance of 1200 for the year from January through to December. But I'm going to be the statements at the 31st of March. And at March, I've not used all the insurance. I've only used three months' worth, but I've paid right the way through to December. So, I've, in a sense, I've overpaid. And if I close down at March, well, the insurance company, hopefully, it repay me the bit I've overpaid. So it's a bit like a receivable, but they're not going to repay me, obviously, because I'm not going to close down. Uh, we call it a prepayment. Now, if I said that too fast, it's worrying you. For the moment, forget it. Uh, because I say there's a later chapter where I'll go through in detail what it is and how you can be asked questions on it. However, apart from that, there are our assets. And the extra bit is, although we must list all the assets as I was doing in the previous lecture, they have to be split between those two headings non-current and current. Uh, below, we list what the business owes. Uh, and the business, again, think back to the previous lecture. They owe money to the owner, the capital, and they owe money to other people, liabilities. Now, here's where the fact it's a sole trader becomes rather important, because for a sole trader, the amount owing to the owner, just like my example, is the amount that was owed at the start of the year. Remember, our year finishes 31st of March, so it started 1st of April. At the end of the year, they still owed 130, but the amount they're owed has increased by the profit for the year, uh, and it reduces by anything they've taken out, the drawings or the withdrawals. So at the end of the year, they are owed 170. But for a sole trader, we have to show what they were owed at the start and separately how much profit the business has made and separately how much they've taken out the drawings. So at the end of the year, they're owed 170. And in fact, Next year, we'd start next year saying, oh, at the beginning they were owed 170, and we'd add on next year's profit and subtract next year's drawings. So that's the amount owed to the owner. Uh, in addition, they've got liabilities, the amount owed to other people. And again, this has to, has to be split under two headings, what we call non-current liabilities and current liabilities. And here's a very precise definition. Non-current liabilities, it's where it's owing in more than one year. Current liabilities is where we owe money, but it's payable in less than a year. Uh, so it depends how soon you're going to have to pay it. Uh, current liabilities, well, payables, your trade payables, the amount you owe to suppliers. I think you'd agree. 
any normal situation, you will be paying it within a year, so it's a current liability. Uh, bank overdraft. Uh, bank overdraft, when you've a negative uh, balance at the bank, uh, the bank can always demand the money immediately. So it, it's payable within a year, it's a current liability. Uh, accruals, well, a bit like prepayments. I don't want to get into detail here because there's a later chapter. But just briefly, um, we're at the end of March. I've used electricity during March, but I haven't had a bill yet. There's going to be a bill, but we haven't received a bill yet. Um, and yet I know I owe money. I can't say I don't owe the money because I haven't had a bill yet. If I've used electricity, 2,000, I'm going to have to pay it, whether the, the bill comes next month or in two months. And so an accrual is where you owe money for expenses, but you haven't yet had the bill. And I don't know if that made sense, great. If it didn't, don't worry too much because of the later chapter. But it is a current liability. Uh, Non-current, I've got there an 8% loan. 8%, you can guess, is the interest they're charging me. But you see, a loan uh, normally will be for a longer period. Perhaps I've borrowed money for five years, and I'm going to have to pay back that 25000 in five years' time. I owe money, it's a liability. But it's non-current if it's not payable for five years. It does depend on the date. You know, normally in an exam, if you're not given dates, you would assume a loan was more than a year, was not current. But you can have the situation, perhaps, when I've borrowed 25,000, but I'm going to have to repay 5,000 of it each year. Well, if I'm going to have to pay 5,000 of it this coming year, 5,000 would be a current liability. And if the other 20,000 was not payable for two, three, four, or five years, the other 20 would be a non current. So you could have to split it. But if, it's, if you're going to repay in a year, it's current. If you're going to repay in more than a year, it's non current. Uh, and so, the total there, 229. So it's not a lot extra from what we had before, uh, just the importance that assets we have to split between current and non current. And it's always non current first and current second. And similarly, liabilities we have to split between non current and current. And again, non current first, current second. Uh, I've stressed several times, this is for sole trader, we're going to look at limited companies later, but in fact a limited company statement will be exactly the same, except that bit you'll see we show slightly differently, but otherwise exactly the same for a limited company. Anyway, I want to go through all the detail, I can't do everything at once, obviously. But uh, this is very much an overview. This is what we're aiming for. That at the end of each year, we need to produce this statement. Now, before I pause this lecture and look at the other statement, statement of profit and loss, I did say I wanted to say a bit more about drawings. So let me say a bit more about drawings. But what I want to say is this. The full definition of drawings or withdrawals, it's anything the owner takes from the business and let me finish this before I make it clear what I mean. Whatever he or she might call it. 
Now, there's two things there, but let me explain. First of all, when I say anything the owner takes from the business, usually it will be cash. The owner needs money to live on, and so it's likely to take out money. In this illustration, he took out 10,000. In my baby example uh, in the last lecture, I think it was 1,200, but it, it normally it will be cash. But it is anything the owner takes. So, for instance, if my business is buying and selling DVDs, and the business has bought some DVDs, but I decide to take some of them home with me, well, fine, that is drawings. The cost of those DVDs I've taken, it's drawings. So it's anything they take. Now, secondly, this is where, somewhere where you might be tricked in the exam. It's whatever he or she might call it. Now, a lot of people with a small business, perhaps my mother owns a shop. She's not an accountant, you know, but she buys things, she sells things quite happily. Yeah, she needs money to live on. So perhaps she says, oh, I'll take $100 a week for me. And she says, it's my wages. Well, she might call it wages, but it doesn't matter what she calls it, it isn't. Anything the owner takes is drawings. It doesn't matter that she calls it wages. Or she might say, oh, I've lent the business money, I'll, I'll, I'll pay myself some interest. It doesn't matter. Anything the owner takes is drawings. And it doesn't affect the profit but it reduces the amount they're owed. Pay money to other people. You know, my mother may have um, people working for her in the shop. Pays them money, that's wages, and it's an expense. Less profit. But if my mother takes anything, then call it whatever she wants, but any money she takes is drawings. And it doesn't affect the profit, but it does reduce the amount she's owed. Okay, now that's the first of the two main statements. And in fact, on the next page, you'll see um, a page headed up terminology. Well, I've been through all of those. I'm not going to read that page to you. But just have a run down by yourself and check. Uh, but they're, they're all summarised there. As I say, this, one of the things about this chapter is we get rid of an awful lot of the terminology that goes with the exam. Anyway, again, to avoid things getting too long, I'll stop this lecture here. But in the next lecture, uh, we'll look at the other main statement, the statement of profit or loss.